What's going on guys, Tutorial 6 here, back for another third party review, and today we're taking a look at the combined mode of Guardia here, uh, courtesy of Doug over at the Make Toys website. I ended up getting both criticisms of this channel, as well as the part I needed to finish, fix my blades, uh, which had a little piece pop out, which coincidentally, I was able to find this morning. Well, it's gone again. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, thanks Doug for sending over those pieces. Uh, that's really great. Now I can actually combine my toy. So here we go. And uh, I actually combined this once before. Um, this will be the second time we've combined it, but I definitely needed that part. Otherwise, uh, he may not have held together. We're going to start with the guns, though. The guns are pretty fun. They're kind of like a little puzzle. You got this piece. It fits here. This fits here. And that fits there. And if we did it the right way, we did not. We want to have it this side I believe for you to look at it plugs in just like this and then we take the other half of the gun the other half of the gun and you can do the opposite nope we were right the first time there we go just like this and then we take one of the hotspot guns and he kinda has two different guns this one slides in like this making the first gun it's okay. I wish I could move this piece so I could turn it up or down. Uh, I don't really care for it on the side like that. I definitely wish it was up and down. The second one transforms pretty well exactly the same way. Plug that in. Plug that in. And then you see you have these two pieces here. This kind of slides in there. And... There you go. So you got that gun. And this is why I wish that I could turn this so this was at least down. Uh, so they were a little bit more similar. But it's really, it's really not bad. Um, even if I could just maybe like turn this or something some way uh, so that these were on the side versus the top. I would have, I would have liked that better. But either way, it's pretty fun and satisfying to combine all their guns into these two big guns. So we're going to start with the core body, and he's relatively straightforward, though there is a couple obnoxious parts of the instructions uh, that don't point out how things should move properly. Uh, mostly speaking, when you get to the arms, they tell you to move some things, and like one of the last steps is virtually impossible if you do it in the order they have. Anyway, let's get this guy going. We're going to bring the ladder out like this, and we'll go ahead and bring these hip skirts down if yours are not already down depending on how you like it we can <coughs> pardon me guys we can flip this around and we can rotate the legs like this now we're gonna bring these feet out like this and we can just kind of leave them in position and you want to get this flap open like that and collapse this down and plug it back in just like you're going to the fire truck mode so let's do that again for this side there we go clip it and plug it in and then you're gonna bring this back and you'll know you have it right because these red pieces are gonna clip whoops are gonna clip into the little hole back here so it clips pretty solidly and it should look like that <laughs> while we're at it let's go ahead and we'll take these pieces here rotate this up and in like that and I believe this is the outside of the foot I can never quite remember which one is the outside of the foot ultimately it really doesn't matter in the end but we'll bring both of these like this just to make the foot and yeah I can't remember which way is out and which way is in I'll look at the instructions we'll have it the right way real quick before we attach the feet um, bring this back like so actually I'm sorry we don't want to bring his knee back like so we want the little piece here like this and that's kind of formed his feet now the next thing to do we're going to take this, disconnect it from here, like so, raise his torso all the way up 
and bring these pieces down. And someone actually asked me in my uh, Vulcan review, could you bring them around um, to make them symmetrical? You can, but it doesn't really look quite right. Um, I don't think you can slide that back any. Yeah, so it doesn't really look right when you do it like that because his abdomen sits out way too far. Anyway, you want them like this. Next thing to do, take this, drop his head down, and close this back up. So finishing his feet, we can take these, and we'll probably have to take these off when we actually attach the vehicles, but we're just going to show you how this all kind of goes together, at least for now. There we go. We got his legs. You can see he looks a little bit anemic there, and we're going to come up to the top here. So this is the part that always leaves me feeling a little bit on the confused side. Um, we're going to take the fire truck here and pop the front end out like this. These little pieces here are going to fold in on each side. Um, one thing you really want to make sure of is that your bumpers of your fire truck are pushed all the way in. And then this is going to come down like so on both sides here. And then if you have everything kind of situated right, it should plug into the top like that on both sides. And then you should be able to plug it into the red piece right down here if everything is correct if something is not correct otherwise it would be plugging in there we go just like that so this is where the instructions do a good job leading you astray you want to make sure that you have these over here like this and we're going to open up these tabs like this. Now what you want to do is get this around so it can come up just like this and fold this down first. They tell you to fold it down last but you need it to go on to this peg right here at the top of his arm. I don't know why they give you like 40 different instructions for this piece when you could have just done it like that. Real easy. Because if you don't, what you need to do now is on this rotation joint here, it's going to collapse in. This tab is going to go here and this tab is going to go here. So I'm going to take it and you have to kind of move it a little with your hand, but it should peg in just like that and uh, you should find that it's pegged in pretty solid down here too if you have it done correctly okay sorry I had to get in there and pull this off so I could get my hand inside here to actually get it through here because this is just painted clear plastic and I didn't want it to break um, hopefully you understand what needed to be done let me show you how they tell you tell you to do it they tell you to kind of get all this stuff in the order so it can go on up like this and then they tell you to collapse this in and get this thing plugged in which is pretty easy to do but now when you bring this here like this to close this up it is impossible impossible to get it to plug into this while also getting it to go in there like it just it doesn't give enough this way so yeah, that's why I recommend get this all situated like this first, then get this plugged in at the top here, which in itself can be a little bit on the difficult side. And then fold it on in and plug it into the top here. And then hopefully everything went into place on the back. In this case it did and you should be good. So going back to finish this off and putting this piece back in here, um, this needs to be up and this needs to be folded down and this should be up so it's all behind this 
uh, when we make this last move here. I just took it out for the clarity of showing you how things work. Yours should be like this and hopefully yep, now things are not plugged in here so we're gonna have to hope that that fixes it. So once you've got this all right as you can see we got the head here we're gonna take his chest piece uh, flip this open if you still have it set for the fire truck fold that down now and this is gonna just go right into here and it should clip in place just like so. We can adjust our wheels. Now we can bring the headpiece down and it clips into the black on each side here. There we go, just like so. And then you can bring the defensor head down and it tabs right on in. And there we go, we've got our kind of sickly looking Defensor, little skinny legs, no arms, not looking so great. And we got this piece separate. So, this piece here, what it does is you take it and you clip it on the top here of this panel or the other panel. And you can see this slot here is just going to take it and tab it in. And we're done for the most part with the actual torso. We can take these two pieces here just for filler and we'll pop out the hands which you can see are like in a little claw type thing here on both of these. And then all they want you to do is to fill this out. Kind of looks like it makes like almost a little axe maybe for Defensor. If you put that on here and you put that on here. And I'm definitely I don't, I don't want to say definitely, but I think I'm pretty sure that it's intended to be some kind of like detachable, some kind of weapon for him. If that's your thing. For me, I think it looks just fine hanging off his back. So now we're going to work on the arm. It's pretty straightforward. Um, they kind of want these straight like this and together still like so on his back. Now we're going to take his hands here, we're going to unplug them like so. Take this piece and get it loose on both sides like that. Now this piece is going to come up and out. From here we can extend our torso out like this and then you want these arms flipped to the top here you can now take these close them back up on both sides and let's uh let's make sure we have our body kind of going the right way so we can make the proper joint here yeah that looks that looks pretty right to me, just like that. You can take these and then these slots here in the top need to fold down like this and plug into these little tabs here which hopefully are oriented right because they do have this tendency to move a little bit on you uh, due to the way that the torso is kind of moving there. So there we go. should be tabbed in just like that. There we go. We got the arm pretty much in condition to be attached onto him here. The only thing left to do is to take one of these hands and hopefully we picked up the correct one fold this out which can be a little bit difficult because it gets stuck into the that gray piece there we go we got his fingers and then this thumb kind of swings down into position like that and uh, I'm gonna say that's the wrong one so we're gonna do it with this one 
So once again, bring it around so it's open. Bring the thumb down here, like so. And there we go. That's the proper hand for blades. So now we're going to take this little piece here, open it up, and then this slides into this plate like this, and then it's going to lock onto itself from the other side to hold it in place, and then just turn the hand so it's facing the right way. And there we go. We got blades ready to be combined. So first aid's up next, and he works pretty well the same way. We're going to open this up, free his hands from here, and close them back into position. I'm going to take this piece and extend it out. Uh, I find first aid's a little bit easier to work with. Bring the front of the ambulance forward. Um, let's just make sure we have our proper rotation for the arm again. We do. Take this, bring the arms around to the top on both sides here. Close this back up. And now these gray pieces actually slot into the sides of the ambulance here, like so. And then these pieces, we might need to move the front of the ambulance out of the way so we can see it better. But they're going to collapse down in. At least they should, like this. So when we bring this to collapse it on in here, uh, you're going to tab these into the top there. And it actually, this secures uh, first aid way better than it secures blades. It might be because the way his, his hands peg together and stuff, uh, just that I feel like first aid just, he works so much better. So now we have that, we can bring the front of our ambulance back here. Okay, sorry about that. I was a little bit wrong here. This does need to be just a little loose like this. I was wondering why it didn't seem like it was pegging in quite right. There you go. Just like that and like this. And you do have the little bit of the ambulance tucked down here. So, like we did last time, we're going to take the one hand here, open up this tab, connect it through and snap it closed and there we go we've got first aid as a second arm so rover to me is where it gets a little more difficult and uh the most difficult is really where axel's concerned we're gonna open this up and get his legs out just like this and that's pretty much most of what you actually need to do. Now we just kind of put it back in position. So take these. Um, it does help to have them separated. And fold them in like you're going to be making his foot for his robot mode. But bring these around to the top instead. Just like this. Now, if you look Right here, there's this angled tab. And what they want us to do here is bring this back in and get this gray piece here on that angled tab. Kind of like that. And that's going to be the angle we're going to want for the car. So just try to you do your best to get it just like that and then plug all of this stuff together like so and just leave the rest like this it just kind of looks like he's a crushed up car that got in an accident or something so axle is the most difficult in my opinion we're gonna start by raising these handlebars and disconnecting this then we're going to come down to these arms 
And the instructions do tell you to do this from their robot mode. I just don't think it's necessary. Also, important, good thing we didn't glue this because you needed it for this. So take these. These are going to come around again like this. We're going to disconnect this. And we do want to bring these down like we're going to robot mode. On both sides here. So the saddlebags have a couple of different ways of being positioned. One of them is the way that goes to robot mode. The other one is kind of locking these things into the bike mode. Like so. An axle is definitely a bit more messy than the rest of them. Now these should be able to drop flat down like this. We should be able to take this, split it here, and now this black piece is going to come back up and as we close it, it should be plugged in like this because this is the slot that this is going to peg onto. So now on this side what we want to do is take these and make sure they're locked in like this. That's going to sure up our connections here. And then we're going to take our little white piece here that we took off the arm and fold that up here. Uh, in the process we also can fold up this exhaust pipe and then this hand you can close it on up. So now you want to come back and plug the hands here into each side and you can put the hands however you want on here. These pieces need to be out of the way though, at least a little bit. Like that. Now you can bring the wheel of the motorcycle down and the handlebars down. Uh, Groove's head will face back this way. And uh, you can have these tucked in too, just so they're a little more like that. And that should be Groove in his foot mode. So coming back to the body here, I took off the little feet pieces. And what we're going to do is start with Groove and he kind of get the legs out of the way. Slot them into this red piece, just like so. Now, I realized when I was doing this, I pulled these up too high. Um, in fact, I'm just gonna, let me put him down here like he's in his robot mode, just so you guys can see. We're gonna take the foot here, and we're gonna plug it in. Now inside here, you got these little holes, and they're gonna go in these tabs. Um, so if you have the foot down here, it's just, it's gonna be too high. So we're gonna kinda raise it up there, and you should be able to get it to the point where Groove wants to tab in to the leg here. So let's do that for the other side. Shimmy this piece on up like so and plug it in just like that right down there. And there we go. We've got Groove in his uh, leg mode. And I think that looks pretty good. You can adjust these little pieces however you want um, I like to bring them in like this personally, uh, just because I don't like them sticking out too far. So we're going to pretty much do the same thing with Streetwise here. Uh, we take him and plug him in like this. Now, these doors actually come down here and peg into the black part of his leg. Just like that. And Groove, I mean, streetwise, very simplistic. There is no connection to this piece right down here, but he's done. Nice and easy. So his arms, you have to flip up these little ports here, and they just peg right on in there. And 
Should be the same thing for Blades unless he wants to fight us. There we go. Right there. And let's see if we can zoom this camera out in a minute to get a full view of this guy. Just want to give Blades his actual Blades can clip in on the top if you want. So here we've got our Guardia all combined and I gotta say all combined is very impressive. Everything looks like it's transformed somewhat but you can still tell exactly what every piece is. Uh, the range of motion on everything is pretty solid. Uh, the head is on a ball joint. Uh, plenty of range of motion out of there uh, both downwards. And uh, up is not I guess as good but you could probably find a way to cheat it if you really wanted to with his neck. Uh, the joints on the shoulder, they are a little weird. Um, you have the actual combiner port, which is ratcheted to give them a little more up and down, but it is hard to manipulate it without kind of untabbing the chest pieces here on Vulcan. Um, but you can still get plenty of range of motion. The actual inner pieces of high med work just fine uh, to give you plenty of up and down uh, based on how that port works. Uh, the, f the ab crunch area is a little bit loose. You can see it doesn't really hold its own weight. Um, worse when it has guns. Um, the combiner port swivels just fine uh, though you can get held up by some of the pieces of the vehicle here uh, in the rotation process. Um, as you saw here, the elbow is ratcheted. You do have the actual elbow joint that's ratcheted. Um, you do have the, the forearm swivel here because of the waist coming down to the hands. You have the wrist rotation, individual ball jointed fingers with uh, the tip pieces each individually pinned. That's pretty nice. Uh, thumb on the ball joint also pinned. Holding his weapon here, you just kind of take it and you plug it into the hole in his hand right here. And he holds his weapon just fine. Um, again though, I do find that he can't really hold it out to the side with the way uh, this joint swings. Same thing for blades over here. Uh, in fact, I actually think Blades is a little weaker. Coming down to his waist. Nice waist down here. I'm trying to stay out of the camera's view here. The articulated uh, hip skirts down here have trouble moving. I thought they went up and down, but now it doesn't seem like they want to go up and down for me. Uh, which does make his legs a little more limited. Let's see, I don't want to, I don't want to break it, but doesn't feel like it wants to go forward. There we go. It finally started moving out of the way there. So plenty of range of motion on the ratchets here, uh, side to side. For the most part, I mean, when he's not gotten any type of movement, he holds his ratchets pretty fine. Um, but it's not perfect. But it's not as bad as that Metroplex was, that's for sure. Coming down to the actual legs here, and let's rotate that back. Um, the legs are tough for me because the way the feet work here, this tends to uncom come undone a lot, and I don't like that. But the knee is supposed to be this part, um, which doesn't look so good when it gets broken up. Um, I wish there was something better to do here that you kind of made it look more natural in my opinion. I mean, it's plenty of range of motion. It just doesn't look good. It's too disjointed, in my opinion. But, for the most part, even though this guy has been seen online being in an Iron Man pose, uh, he never will be on my shelf. He will be sitting looking like Defensor, and that's good enough for me. As far as his size goes, unfortunately, I don't think he really fits in with an MP collection. That just feels a little bit too small for me. Um, I don't know. You just, I think the TFC one actually fits a Masterpiece scale collection a little better than this guy, and even that maybe feels a little bit small. Next to like your uh, M3, 
and your, your Voyager Optimus Primes, I think he looks really good. So overall, I think that this is a real solid set of toys. If you like Defensor, I think he's the best looking Defensor out there. Um, he certainly leagues above the Combiner Wars version. Um, though I do think that maybe the Combiner Wars groove actually is more appealing to more people than Axel is here. But I mean, I just love the presence this guy has. I love the proportions. I think he looks the part. Um, he's fun to mess around with. Uh, each of the bots, I feel, is very fun. Uh, even Axel is one that I enjoy messing around with. It's a solid set. Um, it's a shame that they didn't go ahead and try to make this uh, masterpiece size. Like, if if these were the size of like your MP cars to start with, like, sure, Axel would be a big motorcycle, but like, this would be a real cool design to have in a masterpiece scale. I don't know. It's a good set of toys. I recommend it. Um, yeah, but I can understand that it's not going to be for everyone. For some people, the, you know, your Combiner Wars uh, Defensor is going to be just fine uh, for the scale that you want to display him with. And that's kind of the same scale as this guy. Um, he is bigger than your Combiner Wars Defensor. But, you know, I can see where people aren't going to want to pay that price. Anyway, I liked it. I recommend it. I think it's a good toy. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed the review, and I'll see you next time.